Meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. Woohoo! Hi, everybody. It's Rebecca and Tara, and we have a new feature we're calling Reading from Our Shelves. So thanks to Tara, we have a great title for our new uh, program. And so I'll let you explain what we're doing. Okay. So each month, probably like the last Friday of each month, we're going to try to do a video in which we chat about the books that we've read from our shelves because we both read a lot of books from the library. So this will be only books from our shelves. So we're gonna, it will help to also motivate us to read books from our shelves instead of like being uh, as tantalized is the word that's in my head, but I don't really like the sound of that. But you know, like I, I love, putting books on hold from the library and then getting them because it's like a little dopamine hit. But I also love reading books from my shelves. And this will give us that little dopamine hit if we can be like, this is what we've read. So that's our plan to show you what we've read from our shelves from the past month or so, or books that we've read in the past that we want to highlight from our shelves or books on our shelves that we want to read. Right? Great. I think that's and that's great. And I just have to say one thing. I am a head nodder. So I got to stop doing that. because I can see myself, you know, those dogs in the back of cars that the heads go up and down. That's what I always look like, but it just shows I'm engaged, but I do. Yes, and I, I do. Oh. That. <laughs> so yes, I love this idea. I think it will help me because as a mood reader, I love that dopamine hit. As soon as I see an ebook has come in for me, I drop whatever I'm doing and I start reading that book instead of all the many things that I've purchased over the past year. So yes, we, that, I love this goal. I think it's a good one. So, well, I'm going to start by saying what I'm currently reading okay. and I love this too, because we get to show covers and stuff. Yeah. So I am reading yeah. James by Percival Everett. And this is the, a new author to us that Tara and I have discovered, who we absolutely love. And this is a retelling of The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, but from Jim's point of view. And I have to tell you, I'm only a few pages into it, eh, maybe about 20 pages. And this is absolutely brilliant. I don't know how this man does it, <laughs> really. So we like, excited. Right, right off the bat, he grabs you. So anyway, and I did purchase it because when I looked at the online at the library, it was like 16 weeks. And I mm -hmm. thought, I'm not waiting that long to read it. So anyway, that's okay. what I'm currently reading. How about you? Okay. Well, already I just realized I'm breaking kind of the rules because <laughs> my currently reading is a library book. And I am um, didn't even think about that till you just mentioned it. I'm like, so, but I'm gonna bring it anyways because it's our currently reading, not from the shelves portion of the program. And okay. I'm currently reading uh Wandering Stars by Tommy orange oh. and it's, it's pretty amazing i gotta say i love his i think this okay so i'll just do a quick little setup it's the story of an indigenous an american indigenous family from uh 1924 or around the time uh the mm -hmm. that the carlisle residential school was set up which i think is one of the first or maybe the first residential school in the u.s i'm yeah, not sure but it's around so. the early 1900s yeah. Um, and it's the story of that family from their, not from the beginning, but from the start of one character who goes to the Carlisle family, following up at Carlisle school, following up to present day. It starts with, and it's got like the family tree. So you can see, which is um, very helpful. I will have to say, like I refer to it all the time. That's the little sticky note. Yeah. And each chapter, you're getting the different, not always a different time, different characters, viewpoint, and a different style of writing. It's either in the point of view that he writes from, like I, you, he, she. I, it's, it's good. Like it's not an easy read. Like you really, but the flow that he has, you really have to like kind of let yourself go with the flow sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it's strictly narrative. Sometimes it's this like poetic flow. It's very good. And that's a sequel to There, There. I don't know that it's a, it's not, I mean, it is a sequel. He refers to it as a sequel, yeah. but do you have to, will you have to have read that one before you I read this one? I don't think so, because yeah. I've read There, There when it came out a few years ago, but I can't remember. I know I enjoyed it. I can't yeah. remember anything about it. And I'm yeah. totally fine reading this. Okay. 
I don't right. remember. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I just saw him on a live presentation through the Hennepin County Friends in Minnesota, uh, the Friends of the Library in Minnesota. And it was just a wonderful interview. I really loved it. And um, I can't wait to read that one too. So, okay. So the first book I, so when Tara told me about this, I thought, well, you know, as many of you may know, I haven't been reading a lot lately. So I've had a busy life. And so I don't really have anything on my shelves <laughs> really that I could talk about that I haven't sort of talked about on our podcast and I don't want to bore everybody. So what I did is I went back to my shelves and looked at some things that I really love. And I thought, you know what? It's been a long time since I've read them. I want to highlight them again. So if you haven't read them, maybe this would be of interest to you. But you're going to have to tell me, Tara, what his new title is. I'm not really sure. But I love this book so much by Wab Canoe, The Reason You Walk. And he's in the Manitoba oh, political he's the sphere. Premier. Premier. Okay. I couldn't yeah. remember. So anyway, but this book is basically, I'll just tell you a little bit. It says when his father was diagnosed with terminal cancer, Wab Canoe decided to spend a year reconnecting with the accomplished but distant indigenous man. And it's really just this beautiful love letter to his father and to himself to make peace with what they experienced together. And I have to laugh because <laughs> there was a thing uh, at the end that I loved so much that when I read this book a few years back, I screenshotted it. And I have to say, just as I lost my dad recently, I went back and looked at that again. And I'm telling you, it is, it was so beautifully um, outlined end of life. And it was exactly what my dad went through. So, and what I went through with my dad. So I just love this book and you don't have to have lost a parent to love it but it's just so poetic and, and beautiful. It's my standard thing I say about books I love. It's so beautiful. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> but it really is. I read that one yeah. Yeah. on your advice. And it's also one of my top memoirs. I love that book. It's a great book. Yeah. Okay. Okay. First book I'm bringing is Fire Weather, mm -hmm. The Making of a Beast by John Valent. I've also discussed this one on the podcast, but I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis again. John Valent, a Canadian author from BC, nonfiction book. He uses the wildfire of 2016 that occurred in Fort McMurray, Alberta, as like a touch point to really get into climate science, uh, climate change, the science of wildfires, and what we're wreaking on our world. And oh, and the petroleum industry in Alberta. It's fascinating. It's a difficult read. I spiraled for about a week, but I loved it. Same time. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And let me say, when I said I didn't want to bring books that I talked about on the podcast, but I didn't want to bore anybody, I should have remembered that, of course, you, we have a few new people watching us perhaps on YouTube. So those of you who aren't listening to our podcast, this would all be new to you. So I did not mean to say, you know, I did not mean to insult Tara at bringing that book. Back oh, no, 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 you totally didn't. Because I'm like, um, that's we choose which books we want to bring ourselves that make our own self happy. And I'm like, I wanted to bring this one again. Yeah. Plus also on the audio podcast, you don't get to see sometimes the beautiful covers. That right? is so true. Is also another yeah. point for us to be like, look how beautiful this book is. Yeah, I totally agree. So, okay, good. Now, this one is a little bit, kind of um, timely in terms of what's going on in the world. But I want to bring this back. Uh, this is Marcello Di Cintio, Pay No Heed to the Rockets. And it it is Life in Contemporary Palestine. And it's so funny. I uh, shared this book with our good friend, Jen Bookfiend. And it, she really said what I felt as well, which is he goes to Palestine. This is a few years back. And he talks to, let me get this. It's, um, he meets with Palestinian poets, authors, librarians, and booksellers to learn about Palestine through their eyes. So this is not going to be a, um, history of, of Palestine. And certainly there are things that they talk about, uh, about what's been going on, but it's more hearing people who just, have an ability 
to see beyond the day to day and just have this sort of vision, a more beautiful vision of the world, but hearing it, hearing it through their beautiful words. And as Jen said, get back to my point, uh, you end up going down a rabbit hole because so many of the people that he mentions in this book are front and center in the news right now. So it's really interesting to connect all the dots of these people in the book to what's currently going on. So absolutely love this book. So consider this one if you're really interested, in, especially in everything going on in Palestine right now, check out this book. Yeah, great choice. Yeah. I still have yet to read that. I'm going to move it up on my TBR, though. I got to make sure because I don't know why I haven't read it since now, since now, before well, now. Probably, probably because you have a boatload of fabulous things. You're always, I mean, you I have know, a boatload of fabulous other books that I want to read, too. I know. There's just never enough time. You need to retire. I know. I do. I do. It was a rough week. I need to retire. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay, so we have, that's three nonfiction. I can't remember what I have next. So I'm just going to pull it up and see what it is, if it's another non. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's something different, though. It's a poetry. Okay. So I brought The Meaning of Leaving by Kate Rogers. I loved, so I, I am fairly new to reading poetry. It's been a journey that I started several years ago to try and read more poetry. And it's slow, but I, I now would call myself a poetry reader. And I loved this one. It is, as the book's title suggests, The Meaning of Leaving. Poems about leaving different ways. Leaving geographically, like leaving one country for a different country. Leaving relationships. Uh, it's a beautiful book. It, like, I'm trying to remember, there are poems. She spent a lot of time in Asia. So there's poems about her just a day trips, walking up to temples. When she moved back to Toronto, poems about seeing homeless people on the streets. It's just, it was a really, poems about an abusive relationship she was in that were really gut punching. It's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Is that a hummingbird on the front? Kind of? Is that? Um, it is a bird. a bird. Isn't it beautiful? You don't notice it yeah. at first. I think yeah. it's a gull. It could oh, be a okay. hummingbird though. Yeah. And, you know, maybe if yeah. there might be reference to it in one of the poems about what exact bird that is. But if it yeah. is, I, yeah, I would have to reread it. But, yeah, it's a beautiful cover. But at first, I didn't realize it was a bird till right at yeah. the very end. I realized. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. And I think she carries that motif is carried throughout. Oh, yeah, there's the because it's it's split up into sections. So there's there oh, in a big okay. section. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. I'm bringing one of my all time favorite books. I love this book so much. And it is under 100 pages. And if you're in a reading slump, I highly recommend this book. I promise you, if you are in a reading slump, you will be immediately out of it after you read this book. It is just a breath of fresh air. So it's Wayne Arthurson's The Red Chesterfield. <laughs> And I will just read a little bit here. Uh, Emma is a bylaw officer living with her two brothers in their parents' old house. While investigating a suspicious yard sale, M discovers a red Chesterfield sitting in a ditch. Looking closer, M finds a running shoe and a severed foot. And this is, and I have to tell you, not only is it a hundred pages, but like you can see the, you know, some of the it's very short. It's not going to take a long time to read. You can read it. And I've read it like three times. I love this book. It's so much fun. And it won all kinds of awards. And I highly recommend it. It's a really, really fun read. Yeah, it's a great one. You read it? Okay, I wasn't sure. If I've you only had read it, it yeah. once, but I do want to reread it. I think I borrowed it from the library. So I don't own my own copy. If I ever yeah. see it, in here, I'm going to pick it up. But yeah, it's yeah. a great book. And I, yeah, it's a book that you want to reread. That's all yeah. we're going to say. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You definitely want to reread it. Uh huh. I agree. Okay. I'm going to switch up my orders because the book, a later book I was going to bring, goes more with what you, the Wayne Arthurson book. And mine is mm -hmm. also just a little short one that I read oh. in one sitting one evening and kind of the same thing. It was like a perfect little just jump into it. And it is Jawbone 
by Megan Greeley, a Canadian author, I think from the East Coast. Uh, and it is a book about told from first person. It's like written letter style. One woman is writing to another to her best friend slash lover slash roommate. Um, and it is about isolation, friendship, queer love. It is fantastic it took me a while to get into it because at first I didn't know what I was jumping into I just let myself go with it and it's just it, it's really awesome you're right about these short books just to sit down yeah. and like gobble them up in one sitting it's a pretty awesome little experience yeah yeah and they're usually very impactful which means yeah. you can go back and reread it again and it doesn't take any time and then you get to sort of see those sort of I don't know, sparkling moments that you thought, oh, I didn't catch that the first time because yeah. I was just really into the story. So yeah, yeah I love that. I love that. Yeah. I want to read that one for sure. Yeah, no, I really enjoyed that one. It's a great one. Okay. Now this one, I don't, I'm probably, I meant to look up to how to say the author's last name, but I love this book so much and they made a series out of it, which aired, I don't know, like two years ago, maybe. And the series was brilliant i don't really like adaptations and stuff like that because I, I don't really like them i love the book i don't want to see anything made of it but they did a really really super job because i it's been a long time since i read the book but i felt like they captured the essence of the story and it really felt like they followed it to the letter essex county by oh. jeff lemire i think it's lemire but i'm not 100 percent sure it could be lemire anyway I love this. It is a graphic novel for those of you who love graphic novels. And this is just about, uh, well, I'll just say in Essex County in Ontario, which is kind of close to where I live in Michigan. And it's just a story of the, this family, different iterations of the family and, and how they live and interact with one another. And I mean, it's just so beautiful. Have you read this? No, I've read another book of his, but not this one. And I haven't watched the series. So I got to um, read this one. I got to pick it up. Yeah. And I actually want to watch the series again because I, I actually did miss the first episode and I couldn't go back and pick it up because uh, the way our uh, cable works with the Canadian channel, I couldn't go back and pick it up. But I, I've read some of his other stuff and I haven't really liked it as much as this i just think this is this is really kind of about life in a slow paced rural sort of agricultural community and that just doesn't get enough respect it's kind of like i just you know read uh, willa cather's my antonia it's kind of the same thing you know we're always about you know hectic pace of life and you know urban areas or whatever and sometimes we sort of forget that there are more people well, maybe not in Canada, but in the U.S., there are more people who live in between the two major cities than uh, yeah, not. But anyway, so I want to really recommend this if you haven't read it, because I think it's absolutely brilliant. Beautiful. I love the cover, too. That's a really beautiful I know. cover. Yeah. It makes me want to jump into it and find out who all those characters are. Exactly. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay, I have to, I have to straighten up my book. Hold on. Yeah. I don't want it to get all bent. Okay. Oh, no. All right. What have you got next? Okay. Oh, I'm going to bring, so I'm bringing a series this time and it is the Tony Vicker series by Vince R. Dietrich. I read it on my, on digital, on a digital. So there is the cover of the first book called The Liquor Vicker. This is an absurd yet compelling <laughs> series. It is very absurd. Uh, it's funny. So Vince Dietrich is the was the drummer for the band from the U.S. or from the U.S. from the West Coast called Spirit of the West. Um, he has since started writing at this Tony Vicker series, and Tony Vicker is an aging, unsuccessful musician on the West Coast in, uh, I think, on Vancouver Island in this little tiny village, and with this crazy cast of characters that I think if they existed anywhere else, you would be like, Come on. but it, <laughs> because it's where it's set where it is, I kind of, you buy it and you just kind of jump into it. Uh, 
I love the series. When I came to the end of the series, I was a little sad that I was saying goodbye to these people because I wanted more of them. It's absurd in that there are ghosts. There are really uh, nasty reporters from the U.S., from L.A. that come up to this little town. I don't really want to tell you why because it's part of Tony's story. Uh it's just so good. It's just so funny. I like literally was chuckling out loud throughout each book. Uh, now, the reason why I read, I will put it out there now, the reason why I read all three books is because I get to speak to Vince next week for the podcast. So um, heads up, if you don't listen to the podcast, you may want to because I think this is going to be a really int and I don't care. I just I'm so excited to speak to him because <laughs> I should also put out there that Spirit of the West is one of my top two favorite fans. So yeah. I give I give you credit for saying that at the end because I would have said immediately, oh my gosh, I'm the biggest fan ever, blah, 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 blah. And I'm so excited that I would have been, you know, crazy. But you I'll go it was going on up here in my head. Yeah. I was like <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think and it's really funny because we do get approached now which is kind of fun where we have authors who will reach out to us and say hey would you be willing to read our book and we'd love to chat with you and to be fully transparent if we have actually read a book or two and said no it's not something we can we feel strongly about or that we want to highly recommend and I always tell people up front if we can highly recommend it we're happy to do it right in this case, you were so pleasantly surprised to love all three books. And I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's I love Vince. I love Spirit of the West. I, my family can attest to that. When I received the email, I went bonkers running up and down the house and up the stairs all around the house because I was so excited to get the opportunity to speak to one of the members of Spirit of the West. Uh, but then there was this little, I'm so glad I brought this nap today so I can talk about it because I, I don't want to yeah. gush next week, right? But there yeah. was this little oh, inkling that I'm like, what if, you know, what if I don't like the book? Like, what what happens? And so I'm so delighted that I enjoyed it. I actually really enjoyed it and connected with these characters and the story that he was telling. And I'm just super excited to talk to him for the Spirit of the West connection, but also as an author because I enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. I, and well, and I always tell authors too up front, I say, I, I gush. So I, and they, I tell them, I apologize in advance, but if I really love their work, I I'm ridiculous and I gush and I don't care. But I, I do that. So I'm going know. to try not to, but mm, you, know. you know, that's what I'm saying. You're like a cool cucumber because, but maybe internally you're like, Oh my, I know. But I do know that when you, it was so funny because when we got the email, it was hilarious because you, responded I think immediately and normally you don't do that and so that I thought uh oh I this is a big deal yeah I usually let you like they'll send it to both of us but I like you you're the you're the tech person you're our correspondence person I literally yeah. just show up and yeah. Rebecca does all the background stuff but I I didn't even read the whole email like I just sent it back oh yes bam yeah. Yeah. yes so yeah, I love that. And I haven't read the series yet, but it's so funny because what I love is when we do, when Tara does the interview on her own, I'm the tech person. I'm listening to it the whole time. And I cannot wait because even his response to you was so funny, just like naturally really funny. And I know this is going to be a brilliant interview. So anyway, you have, you all have something to look forward to soon. Yeah. So, okay. I'm bringing uh, a couple of children's books because, and I realized that most people don't really care, but that's okay. I'm a former youth yeah. librarian and these were two books that I loved. One of them is a series and it is, this was the Raven Mother. And especially I'm bringing them because obviously with children's books, the illustrations can just be so brilliant. And Brett Hewson, Brett D. Hewson is the author and he does have, he is indigenous and I'm so afraid I cannot pronounce the name, but it does say Brett D. Houston. So I'm going to leave it at that. So I don't, uh, I'm not disrespectful in butchering his name. But anyway, it's part of a series that he wrote. And then the same person, Natasha Donovan, illustrated. And they have the sockeye mother, the grizzly mother, the eagle mother, the frog mother, and the wolf mother. And I actually want to get the whole series because wait till you see 
some of these yeah. illustrations. Well, the cover so, is beautiful. Yeah, it's it, and I love because I love that Western uh, art artwork, indigenous art. It's one of my favorite things that sort of Pacific Northwest. And I just think it's just so beautiful. And so if you have children in your life uh, who, first of all, love animals, and but second, love to learn new things, it's just so interesting and informative, but in such a beautiful way. So I highly recommend this series. Yeah. That's okay. Beautiful. Okay. We have like weird little themes going on from one book to the next, because I'm bringing a bird book. Have to oh read the book. I know. There you go. So it's a memoir, nonfiction, and it is better living through uh -huh. birding. Uh, Notes from a Black Man in the Natural World by Christian Cooper. So Christian Cooper from the U.S. I think he lives in New York. Um, I can't remember which state he's from originally, if it is New York State. Has been birding since he was a young man. He's now, I believe, 61. So he's like a full-on birder. He was older. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Brought to attention a few years ago in 2020. And I brought this book to the podcast as well, to the audio podcast, um, through an incident that occurred in Central Park, where he was birding with a dog watcher that went viral. It wasn't not a great encounter that he had. I don't think they have great encounters with uh, dog walkers sometimes anyways, especially at this time when it was pandemic and they were just, the dog walkers were just letting their dogs go wild anyways, but it became racially motivated, uh, racially motivated. I don't know if that's the correct word, but yeah, well, she, she was met racially motivated for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, that's what brought him to prominence. But from that came this book, which I will say there's only one or two chapters about the incident itself. The rest of it, he books and bookends it with the beginning at Central Park when he was a young boy and what brought him into uh, burning, ending with the Central Park incident that brought him notoriety and everything in between is his life as a queer black man in America, in the comic book industry, in publishing, finding love, traveling the world, the relationship with his father, the chapter with his father was beautiful worth reading the book just for that chapter but i enjoyed the whole book so yeah, yeah i want to read i want to read that one for sure yeah. yeah okay actually i was going to make this my last book but then i forgot i have one major one that i want to share with the very oh, end yeah. but okay so another picture book is uh small in the city by sydney smith and sydney smith does not need my help in promoting his work he's actually very well known very you know award-winning etc but the reason i wanted to bring this is if you live in an urban area or specifically if you live in Toronto, um, this book, when I read it, I pre-pandemic, I went to Toronto a lot and I just read this book and I just kept thinking, man, he captured that feel of being in the city in the winter because I often went to Toronto in the winter. And it's basically a story about uh, being small in the city and something's missing and it's about this child's story and it's anyway it's just and I think it's probably won awards as well but it's really beautiful but I love Sidney Smith I've read a number of his books and I just wanted to bring that because it I'm not kidding when I was reading it I just kept thinking damn this really feels like I'm back in Toronto every page every every illustration just felt like I was there so I loved it but it looks like from what you showed too, that you get the perspective of being small, like of that yeah. child experience, as opposed to us just yeah. being there. Yeah. Which... yeah, this is definitely from the point of view of this child. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. now, okay. <laughs> My last book does not <laughs> match with, with your la your book, previous book. Okay, give me a minute. I got to find it on my, because I read it digitally. So let me find the cover. Um, doot, doot. here we go. I read this. Let me just chit chat while I'm finding it. I uh, read this one for my book club and my monthly book club. So Rebecca now knows which one I'm bringing, I think, unless she's forgotten. 
And my book club decided to read a romance this this past month, this month in March. I'm not a romance reader, but I dibble dabble a little bit, but they tend to be more a uh, closed book, closed, no, closed door romances. But this, and so, and that's what I thought I was getting because if you What's judge- closed, me, Oh, What's closed, closed door, 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 like no sex or very little sex, or you don't get the detail. Like you're just getting up to okay. the point of like, you know, that they have sex. And then it's the next morning, that kind of okay, thing. Like got it. not much in between kind of thing is given. And that's what yeah. I thought I was getting with this book, which is <laughs> look at that sweet cover. Oh, aren't they cute? Let me hear What's like it called? Oh, that's right. Fan girl. Fan girl down. I also yeah. once thought it was a football book when I voted for it because I like football, but it's golf, which I did not realize until I started re reading it. And I do not like golf. I I've played it a couple times. It's okay. I don't mind playing it for like nine holes. And then I'm bored by like hole seven and I want to move on. I hate watching it as a spectator sport. I really hate it. So I, I pull it. It's okay. I have lots of people in my family who love watching it. So I get it, but it's not for me. So one, I was like, I'm reading a golf book. Duh. And then, but I'm like, okay, it's a sweet little look. How sweet they are. They're so cute. No, it's very spicy. Very spicy. <laughs> Very spicy because when I reached the first uh sex scene, I was like, Whoa, <laughs> what is going on? But it was fine. So, so what you're sex, saying, so, yeah. so what you're saying is the door was wide open, wide open, <laughs> lots of stuff were wide open. <laughs> if I can uh, say that, wide open. Anywho, uh, let's get to the story. It's story is uh, what's her name, Josephine is a fan of wells that's the golfer he's a professional golfer who was riding a high and then crashed his, and his career is crashing and she remains his steadfast fan something happens he's a misbehaving man he's not well liked on the tour anymore something happens she ends up being his caddy and helping him get his oh. uh, career back on track at the same time the reason she's doing it is financially motivated so that she can make money to help her pro chop she is also she's not a professional golfer but she is a golfer and she and her family own a golf pro shop a pro shop in florida so she that's not making a lot of money she wants to do renovations she also needs money for health care because it takes place in florida she is type one diabetic, has no health insurance, is rationing her insulin. So there's a lot going on. So the romance is open door, it, it but it's sweet. They I I genuinely enjoyed this book once I he you know once I got like little <laughs> sensibilities were overcome. I was like the the plot is wonderful. The characters are truly likable. Uh, we discussed maybe a month, month and a half ago, Meet Me at the Lake. I went into depth into uh, Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune, the romance that was shortlisted for Canada and the issues I had with it. All the issues I had with that book, I did yeah. not have with this one. So it's, I liked the characters. I liked the romance. He was held responsible for his bad behavior and he took responsibility for his bad behavior, which was one of the issues I had with this book. These two characters communicate when they have a problem with each other. They both talk and tell each other what the problem is. It's, you know, talking. Yeah. People do well, that. Yeah. And it's an American author. So unfortunately, it would not have qualified for Canada Reads. No, but... no. Yeah. That's the kind of romance. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it does answer all the, the things that you talked about Yeah, with Meet Me at the Lake. Yeah. So, and actually it sounds kind of interesting. I, I don't know, maybe one day I might try, I might try reading it. She's apparently prolific. I, everyone else seems to know of her and I, this was, I think I knew the name, but I hadn't read anything by her. Um, it also dealt with the, cause the main character has, uh, type 1 diabetes, it delves into the healthcare and insurance and healthcare system in the U.S. Really well done. 
So I, uh, yeah. yeah, there was a lot about this book I really enjoyed. Yeah, but, good. and it was a surprise. You did not expect to right. enjoy it, right? Did not expect it, but prepare. If you're a little sensitive to spicy, <laughs> uh, I'm not getting into the details here because. I did tell Rebecca one detail, but it wasn't face to face. I'm like, it was voicemail. And I was like, hmm, <laughs> I'm uncomfortable telling you this. I know it was so funny because you did. You said, I couldn't say this to you like in real time, but you said, I can say it in a message. And I, I, I laugh. Your messages are always so much fun. I, I love it. So I am a, <laughs> it's a, I'm a weird, I'm not prudish, but then I sometimes I like turn and I'm like, Full on prude. It is weird. I can't control it. Yeah. No. Well, some, I mean, when you told me what it was, I, I would have felt kind of the same way <laughs> myself. I have all these messages. What was it? <laughs> you know what? You... We're not, we're never going to tell you. You have to read the book if you yeah. want to find out. So, yeah. yeah. And for yeah. those of you who have read the book, if you think I'm a prude, go put it in the comments. I'm fine with it too. I don't <laughs> mind. I won't be offended. I am. But yeah. Good okay, you ended on the non-spicy. Okay. Yeah, so, oh yeah, so this is totally not like that at all. This is one of my reading goals this year, which is to read this book. It is called Project 562. And because we're on uh, YouTube, that I get to show it. So this is a book that a an Indigenous woman in the United States took 10 years to write. She's a photo, sort of photo journalist. Matika Wilbur, and it is Project 562, Changing the Way We See Native America. And each section is approximately, or I mean, each person um, is, oh, hold on a minute. Are you still there, Tara? I am, yeah. Okay, hold on a second. My little YouTube, I still have a signal, but it looks different yeah, than it I've got, before. hold on a second here. Okay, everybody's still with me? Yep. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I hit a button on my computer and it, oh, it okay. started doing a replay. Sorry about that. And I don't know how to edit, so we're not going to edit it out. Yep. You're just going to have to suck no. it up. Okay, so, each, and let me make sure you can see it all. Her wow. photographs are absolutely beautiful. And then she does a profile of the people or person. She'll say what tribe they're from, because in the United States, they still refer as a tribe. I know in Canada, it's different, I believe. Um, might be nation or a nation, I'm not sure. But anyway, the illustrations are just so beautiful. And some of the... Wow. Some, yeah, it's a, it's a coffee table book. It's huge. But it it's is. just so beautiful. And I've learned so much about these people individually in whatever you know tribe they're, they belong to and what they're doing in their lives. And I've looked a lot of them up because it's taken me a while to read it because I read about them. I look them up online. They're in social media. They're doing all kinds of active things. It could be politics, sports, uh, you know, planting and, you know, growing indigenous uh things and, and cooking or whatever. It's every, it's across the spectrum. 10 years of her work, she had uh, grants that allowed her to take that time to put this together. I'm reading sort of kind of like one page a day, although it's, I'm reading many at a time to catch up too. But at the end of the year, I will have it finished. So if you have a chance, I did find it at my library, but it was so overwhelming the size and scope of it. And I knew I wanted to pour over it. So then I purchased my own copy and it is, you know, prior to reading all the things I've read about Indigenous peoples in Canada, I'll be honest, you know, I didn't have any experience with um, Native Americans in my own country. And I do think that many of us, I'll say myself, it's almost, it's like often they say they are invisible to us. Mm -hmm. Because I we have, you know, reservations all over Michigan, all over the country, and yet we in America, I think we look at it like, oh, they were the people during the pilgrims and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So it's just shameful how we've um, not paid attention to their lives and their accomplishments and everything 
uh, the way they live and and thrive in our in in our world because unfortunately it is our world compared to the way you know we took it over and all of that. But anyway, absolutely love it. If you want to even just get it from your library and and you know peruse it, I would highly recommend it. It's absolutely a beautiful book. So yeah, it looks beautiful. Okay. Okay. And I will say, sorry about that little glitch. So it is what it is because uh, sometimes we are brand new at YouTube live. <laughs> and so I did hit a button that unfortunately put me in a weird place. Uh, also, I, I also don't know how to edit really. So that's why I can't edit that part out. Maybe I could figure it out. But anyway, uh, I could practice that. Maybe that would be a good opportunity to practice, but basically, uh, I also don't know how to get all the titles that we talked about up, but we showed you the covers. So, you know, the title and the authors. So in the notes, there may or may not be a follow-up with all the titles. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. So we're still learning. It's, it's still new learning. to us. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Are we good? I think we're good. Great books. Cool. Great books. Yep. It was fun. All right. So we will see you all next month. Happy reading. <laughs>